First Timothy 6, and uh, as has been often mentioned, uh, it's interesting things that you pick up that you thought you knew. Uh, hopefully we continue to grow, and for me, daily reading is definitely one of the things. It's almost as important as showing up here every week, multiple times per week. Uh, I keep learning. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, brothers and sisters. <laughs> um, so today, I'm going to talk about slaves. And it's not going to be political. We're not talking about reparations or what the political climate is today, but personal. It, hopefully every person. Uh, not going to particularly discuss the concept between a kidnapped slave and a voluntary slave. Just understand that there are those things, right? So in 1 Corinthians 6, starting at verse 1, we read, Let as many servants, and that word is duolos, which literally means slaves. Sorry? 1 Timothy 6, 1? Did I say Corinthians? Wow. That doesn't even have a memory on my brain. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> First Timothy six one, <laughs> and I'm reading from the Standard King James. Uh, I'm probably going to read my version, but I don't. I'm not bothered by if you leave a different version up there. Probably good to be able to compare. So either any way you want to handle that. So from the King James, it says, "Let as many." servants or slaves or bond persons uh, and that word does mean slaves there is a word and many references to employees or hired laborers in the new testament so they understood the difference just just to be clear on that that as many servants as are under the yoke that kind of explains it too doesn't it Slavery, the yoke of slavery. Count their own masters worthy of all honor. Is that how we hear about slavery this day and age? Uh, it's not, is it? It's not at all. Uh, that, or because, so that, the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Whoa, that's a strong word. So if we're a discontent slave, that blasphemes the name of God? You know, that, to me, with my political understanding of this current client, that throws a whole new light on that concept. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And there's a lot more to that. Verse 2, And they that have believing masters... So that means in verse 1, the master is non-believing. And you have to honor that master correctly, otherwise you are dishonoring the name of God. Interesting. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. So wait a minute. If you were a slave, wouldn't it be better for your master to be in the faith? Comparing verse 1 and verse 2 there. One, verse 1, the master is not in the faith. faith. Verse 2, he is. But the admonition there is to not despise them because you're brethren. Wait. Wouldn't that be better? So, interesting study into human psychology, which I am no expert, but we all understand some basics. Uh, and it, an interesting study has been done in prisons. You know, prisons and slavery is our comparison there in the US. And when they have a harsh warden, really strict, not nice, and they are under 
an iron fist, there's never any riots. There's never any problems. I can't say never, but it's seldom. But soon as they get an easier warden who is all up with human rights and allows them privileges and stuff, they can just about count the days before there's a riot wanting more human rights. Because now they have the ability to riot and complain. They're given more rights. It's just an interesting thing about our humanity. If we're given an inch, we take a mile. Isn't that a saying? Yeah, that is a saying. So here, it looks like it's a problem, more of a problem to have a believing master than a non-believing master. So maybe it's harder to be subject to a brother than a non-brother. You know, there might be something like to that. I mean, if we think we're an equal, but yet, even if we're a voluntary slave, you know, you have, hmm. Verse 3, verse 3. So we're still talking about slaves. We're on the same subject. If any man teach otherwise, other than to honor your masters, right? And consent not to wholesome words, even to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So if, you, if somebody teaches, don't respect your master. Verse 4, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Whoa. Wow, what? So if you disagree with how to treat your masters, you are proud to read that again. <laughs> Let's keep reading though. Verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Man, I want to read that again. Hopefully I don't need to. Hopefully that struck you like it struck me. If you disagree with what Paul is saying here, you are in that category. Proud, knowing nothing, doting about questions and strifes of words and envy and strife and railings and evil surmi surmisings. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Here's a big one, though. Destitute of truth. The truth is, where you are, you need to be content with that. And supposing that gain is godliness. Wow, That's, there's even words for that in today's world. Now, if you're a slave, wouldn't a little bit of gain be good? Well, let's read verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, we quote this verse a lot. I've quoted it a lot, but I have to confess, I never really considered it from the standpoint of a slave before. I've never really considered it from the point of somebody who probably has nothing. I've had trouble applying this verse to myself when I've got pretty much everything. <laughs> I'm still discontent sometimes. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? I, I, do you have some similar thoughts? Verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Not even the Egyptian pharaohs could take anything out with them. Verse 8, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. We're still talking about slaves. I want to add having food and raiment, house, car, computer, smartphone, <clears throat> clean laundry, uh, a shower that, for me every day. Hmm. But I don't see them there in this verse. In fact, that desire in my part might put me into the next verse, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Okay, so we're talking to and about slaves, but is it just slaves? You know, I think we can expand it upwards easily. 
I think it, it expands up to us and to everybody. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, or as some like to say, all kinds of evil. If you want money of power, it all kind of goes together. Which, while some coveted after, so if you want more, you're covetous? Yeah, I, I don't know where to draw a line there. <laughs> they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Anyway, loving money is sin. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have a job and work for it and use it to help others, etc. But if you want it for yourself and only, and there might be a problem there. Remember, God is first. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, I hope he's talking to us, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, house, car, can be, oh no, no, <laughs> no, not that stuff, right? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, just so we know, Ephesians 6, 9 bears a little bit on this. Ephesians 6, 9, hopefully I say Ephesians and not some other book, <clears throat> says, And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Well, obviously we want to get to this point, don't we? When we're talking about slaves, your master is in heaven, whether you're a slave or a master, right? Neither is there respect of persons with him. You know, God doesn't care whether you're a slave or a master or anywhere in between, does he? We know we're not to be men's stealers or trade in men's souls or bodies. These things are referred to in the New Testament in Timothy and Revelation. So this sermon isn't about that. We know that's wrong. So we'll, we'll be politically correct that far. But here in Ephesians 6, why is there instructions to masters? Well, because it's not a sin to be a slave. And I, 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 can I go this far to have a slave? As long as it's a voluntary slave. If I'm hungry and starving and I am willing to work for you for food, you know, that's, that well could be slavery. And that's not wrong. Now, some of the worldly concepts of slavery, I am not dealing with those. Not interested in that, and I'm not going to worry about that. In Luke 16, verse 13, we have a verse we want to talk about, just a little bit. Luke 16, 13 says, No servant, slave, can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or, will, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So who are you going to be a slave to? It is your choice. John 8, 34. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the slave of sin, servant of sin. So we might claim one thing and not be that. I might claim to be a slave of God, but you know what? You can observe me and you can tell whether I might be stretching the truth a little or whether I'm doing it right or not. I'm not that you can see everything, but everybody has some understanding. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. 
Paul, a servant, slave of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Do we make that distinction in our lives? Do people see us that way? If not, we should look in a mirror and see what we're reflecting, right? Galatians 1, verse 10. Galatians 1, 10. Which says, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant or slave of Christ. Now, peer pressure is something we know all know about. If you're still in school, you may not really know what it's about, but we're affected by it, right? <laughs> Hugely. Even at work, we're affected by it. It's so easy just to fall into the groove of where everybody else is going. And it is a uphill swim to uh, go your own way. And nowadays, wherein all the memes on the internet and everywhere else are basically anti-God, it's definitely an uphill swim. Now, these words have been from the word doulos, which, according to Strong's and several others, literally means slave, voluntary or involuntary. And let's have a couple more verses on that. Uh, here's what a servant or a slave does. Luke 17, 7. Luke 17, 7. Read a few verses here. But which of you, having a servant slave, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he is coming from the field, go and sit down to meet? And those, when you got a slave and he's coming in, he, he's been working hard, and you say, hey, 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 take a break. Why don't you go have a bite of food and drink of water and take a break? Which of you will do that? Verse 8, and will not rather say to him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. The reality of slavery is that, you know what, you go out and you work hard, and you're about at the point of thinking you really need a break and maybe you might not survive anymore, and you come in and guess what? There's more work. You aren't going to sit down and take a break. You're going to double down and do a little more. And that's what happens. Verse 9, doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not, or no, as we would say, I don't think so. In this era, we don't have employees like that. So this is certainly a slave, right? No question. So let's read verse 10. So likewise ye, so in thinking of these thoughts about a slave, so likewise ye, when ye have done all those things which are commanded you, say, this is what you should say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Man. That's harsh. You mean I worked hard all day, I sweat, I did things I didn't want to do, and I, when I was about to faint, you made me work a little harder. Wow. But then the end result of that is we've done that we should, should do. Hmm. Are we willing to be that kind of slave for our Lord? In other words, if you expect it to be easy, guess what? He never promised us a rose garden. Okay, he did promise a garden, a garden in paradise, but not now, <laughs> right? Not now. Galatians 1, verse 8. Galatians 1, verse 8. 
Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Yeah. Am I the only one that looks at these verses and says, wow, there's just some harsh language. <laughs> We're talking New Testament here, but it's harsh language. Paul doesn't pull his punches, and neither did any of the other authors. As we said before, so now, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For yet if I pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. If you, because we will make a choice. We'll either make it easy for our lives now, or we'll love other people and try to make it better for them and us later in God's greater plan. Because if that plan isn't real, this life, you know, you might as well eat, drink, and be merry, right? <laughs> Why would I be the slave of somebody else if that's not real? Why would we think that that's not real if you think for, I don't know, in our case, probably not very long, but in anybody's case, you have to openly refuse the concept that there's a God. Now, of course, many people are going to disagree with my conclusion, but that is my conclusion. It is our choice, totally and completely. Now, just a couple of verses about what I talked about before. There is, there is a word uh, for wage worker. It's the Strong's word G3409. I didn't bother to memorize it. I, sorry. But let's go to one verse of those. Matthew 20, verse 7. These people are more like an employee today, just, just to show that such a thing occurred. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So they're paid a wage. And some of them were unhappy with what they agreed to in the first place. They didn't like the fact that some came in late and didn't have to bear the burning sun. I wonder if the Jews thought that about the Gentiles being invited in. Hmm. Don't know. But you know what? God is fair. He is. There's other stories uh, about that in James and in Mark. And I don't know if we're going to have time to get to all those. We might, but that's all right. We'll skip that. There's also the concept of servants in the New Testament and the word diakonos, ministers and servants, not slaves, but by choice. Let's look at a couple of those verses. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 4. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, diakonos, servants, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. So it's a choice that you can make and have to make. Mark 9, 34. Mark 9, 34. But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last, and servant of all. Now this isn't the word slave here, this is the word diakonos. So if you want to be the greatest, uh, maybe you should slow down and offer to serve, minister to, help. Interesting. That's uh, actually does it draw a good comparison to a servant slave, doesn't it? But it's different. First Timothy 3:12. First Timothy 3:12. Let the deacons, the diakonos, ministers, 
be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their houses well. Huh. How come it doesn't say ruling the wife? Oh, that's another subject. Just something to think about. Notice it says ruling the children, but not, not the wife. Hmm. That's kind of up to the wife, isn't it? Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 21. 1 Corinthians 7, 21. Art thou called being a servant? Now that we're back to the word slave here, doulos. Care not for it. In other words, you know what? It doesn't matter. If thou mayest be made free, use it rather. Okay, there's a, an advantage to being free, isn't there? Absolutely. Keep on reading. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Wait, there's an advantage to being a slave too. Huh. Because, in, because you have other responsibilities, the Lord is calling you his freeman. Likewise, also that he is he that is called being free is the Lord's servant. Ha! Huh. If you're free, you can do more for the Lord. Now you have a, a better master. And you have things to do. Being free from men lets you do more for Christ. 2 Timothy 2.24 <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2.24 which says, and the servant, duolo, slave, of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. So there, here's some requirements for how you handle your, your slavery, your situation. No striving, gentleness, teaching, patient. I need that sometimes, and sometimes I need it right away, right? Romans 6, 16. This is a, another one. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. I don't know how to say that any better. No commentary is necessary for there. But it's always our choice, isn't it? It's always our choice. We have all kinds of excuses why we make the wrong choice. But it's always our choice. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldier? Soldiers are often inscripted. Yeah, often slaves. And if they try to run away, guess what? That ends their lives. Pretty good definition of a soldier. That might be different now, but we're in a different time now. Verse 4, no man that warreth, do we have a battle? Entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Yeah, if we choose that, know that we too are chosen. And, and it's first things first, isn't it? And the first thing is being a servant to Jesus and his Father God. The affairs of this life are very secondary. We do have to choose. Okay, let's finish with John 15, <clears throat> starting at verse 12. John 15, 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. In all of this, hopefully we can slow down and see that the whole goal of God and Jesus is to love us to want the best thing for us, and that we need to perpetuate, replicate that love. 
that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. We understand that one pretty easily. We say it easily, but man, I've witnessed best friends, spouses, that this is the last thing they'd do, and the first thing they'd say, man, if you'd really practice this, there wouldn't be any problems, would there? Verse 14, ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever you want to do. <laughs> nope. Whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, slaves. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. We can endure ourselves. Endure. Woo! We can endure ourselves to the Lord, right? By doing what he commands, by loving him, by loving one another. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Big if, if we choose right. It's no secret. Do we want to be part of the family of God? God loves us so much that he lets us choose. I, li I like to word it that way. He loves us so much that he lets us choose. And he will pay so much more than what is right. Thank you. Let's have a song. More like the master, number 117.
finish with a prayer. Almighty God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time to gather together to look into your precious words of truth, your spirit, your love. Share it with us, Lord, abundantly, and help us where, when, when and where we are weak and need strength. Lord, especially be with those wherever they are that are searching for your truth and for your love and that are in need of help spiritually and physically. We know, Lord, that your will will be done. And we thank you, Lord, for all of these things. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.